Ghost. Amen. Amen. As we near the end of the octave of the Epiphany, we should not cease interceding or asking intercession of these three great saints, our predecessors in the faith, Saints Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, really make friends with them in these remaining days of the octave, and call upon their intercession throughout the year as you've inscribed their initials above the entrances of your home with the blessed epiphany chalk. As we've mentioned in different little sermons we've been giving during this octave about the Magi and about their gifts and he whom they came to adore, our Lord, the Christ child, will return to those gifts that they offer. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We recall that those gifts point to something about this child they adore. It also points to those particular virtues which we, in imitation of the Magi, ought to offer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, each and every day. <clears throat> the gold, we remember, represents that Christ is King, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Gold, frankincense, that he is both priest, but also, too, that he is true God, for only incense is offered to God in an, an act of worship. Finally, myrrh, it points to the fact that our Lord is true man, that he will die for our sins, for myrrh was used to embalm the body for burial. We also recall that these three gifts represent virtues that ought to be in each one of our souls so that we can imitate the Magi in offering our gifts to our King, our God, and our Savior. Gold representing charity, the most important of the virtues. For St. Paul says, there are three virtues, faith, hope, and charity, but the greatest of these is charity. Frankincense represents that devotion, which is so important for us to understand properly. Devotion is not sweet feelings, the way I hold my head when I pray, or the facial expressions that I make. Devotion, St. Thomas tells us, is promptness in the service of of Almighty God. Devotion is promptness in the service of Almighty God. Finally, myrrh. Myrrh represents that virtue of self-denial, mortification, in imitation of Christ, our crucified Lord. Now, in order for us to thrive in these virtues, to grow in these virtues of charity, devotion, and mortification, we must practice daily meditation. When St. Thomas Aquinas speaks of the virtue of devotion in the Summa Theologica, his great summary of theology, he says that it's in meditation that our devotion, our promptness in the service of God increases. And so during this new year, as we kind of grapple with our New Year's resolutions, perhaps we haven't made up our minds yet as far as what we'll do for the rest of the year. Don't worry, we're only about a week and a half into the year. You've got plenty of time to put these things into practice. Put daily meditation at the top of your spiritual bucket list. Meditation. At least five minutes. Ten minutes if you can spare it. 15 if you're feeling generous. All right, and work your way up. Okay, but start with at least five minutes. Meditation, anybody can do it. If you can have a conversation with another human being, you can do meditation. For St. Teresa of Avila says that meditation is a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Christ. Okay. You can picture him on the cross, in the manger, walking the streets, of Galilee, in the Gospels, but spend time with him. 
5, 10, 15 minutes, silently in your heart, speaking to Him, offering those acts of love, thanksgiving, contrition, and asking Him for all the help you need to follow Him as you carry your cross daily after Him. Meditation is essential if we're going to offer these gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, charity, devotion, and self-denial to our Lord. But even if we have this daily practice of meditation, we may and we will very quickly realize how poor we really are. Our gold, we may not have very much of it, but charity. Our devotion might consist more of just nice feelings than actual promptness in the service of God. But there might be flashes of that promptness here and there. And our mortification, we're all very weak. And we're scared of suffering. And so any little thing, you know, makes us hesitate. Any little fear of it hurting too much, we might, you know, pause. Right? So how do we overcome this? We overcome this by recalling the fact that Christ became poor to make us rich. Christ emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, to communicate his gifts, to communicate his grace to us, to communicate his charity, his promptness in the service of God, his sufferings to us so that we might claim them as our own. St. Paul tells us Christ has given us his only son and in doing so he has given us all things. Christ so loved the, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for us men and for our salvation. By our baptism, we are incorporated into Christ. We are made members of his body. And so then truly, the charity of Christ, the charity of his sacred heart, belongs to us. His promptness in the service of his heavenly Father belongs to us. His sufferings on the cross belong to us. But too often we don't claim them for ourselves. Where do we claim them? Where do we take ownership of these great gifts that Christ offers to each and every one of us, members of his body? At the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And the holy sacrifice of the Mass. We unite ourselves to that charity of Christ to that promptness in the service of God, even to the laying down of his life, we unite ourselves in our little sufferings and sacrifices to the greatest sacrifice, that sacrifice of God made man on the cross. Christ indeed then became poor so that we might become rich. Let us claim for ourselves then, these gifts which Christ offered to us, so that then we can offer them back to God. In the canon of the Mass, just after the consecration, the priest prays that we offer these gifts which we have received. We have received Christ's very body and blood, so that we can offer to God, God himself under the appearances of bread and wine. We can offer that same sacrifice which Christ offered on the cross. And there again we see Christ becoming poor, emptying himself on the cross to enrich us so that we can offer that pure victim, that holy victim, that immaculate victim in reparation for all of our sins, all of our shortcomings, so that we can offer to God something worthy of himself, namely God, his only begotten Son.
in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So if we wish to grow in charity, devotion, and self-denial, meditate on the charity of Christ. Meditate on His promptness in the service of His Heavenly Father. Meditate on His sufferings throughout His life, but especially His sufferings on the cross. When we're tempted to discouragement, and with our lack of love, our lack of promptness in the service of Almighty God, and our lack of the spirit of self-denial and taking up our cross after Christ, recall that the charity of Christ his promptness and obedience to the will of his Father and serving him. And his sacrifice on the cross, his sufferings, belong to us. Claim them, especially in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And then, and only then, will we offer, like the Magi, fitting gifts for our King, our Savior, and our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.